Welcome back to Nails and Nails TV. This is Tim Hunter. Thank you guys for tuning in. Okay. CAA. A talent agency called Creative Artist Agency. If anyone in or around Hollywood, they got to be very familiar with them. Now, I'm bringing this up because this is very interesting, okay? This has to do with the rap artist 50 Cent also, okay? Now, let's go back to CAA first. I just want to give you clarity. CIA is a talent agency that was started around 1975, mid-70s, or something like that. Well, it was started by Ron Meyer and Michael Ovitz and a few other agents that actually migrated over from the Will Morris talent agency, which is like basically the big dogs in town, always have been a Titan agency. Now, they actually were planning on, you know, starting their own company. Some of them worked in the mailroom or what have you and junior execs and all that. But... The thing is, Will Morris was just kind of out of touch at the time. They were signing all these older acts. And these guys saying, what the hell? We, let's sign some movie stars, you know, some young blood in here, and let's take over Hollywood. Well, they didn't agree with that concept. <laughs> so as they're planning this, word got out that they were planning on leaving. So they abruptly got fired, all of them. So they just started up their own AC. They rented a small office, got some, you know, Fold up chairs, a couple of desks, had their wives come in and switch days on being a receptionist. And they put their little money together, something like $100,000, and they just went at it. I mean, trying to get anyone they can to the table that had a name. Of course, they were, you know, balked up on and so on like that. Well, fast forward later, about 10 years, they're the hottest agency in the game, taking those shorts, representing people like Sylvester Stallone and really just about actor and actress out there so needless to say they had their foot on the ground and, um, ever since that time fast forward now here it is 2020 we're in a major pandemic COVID-19 is running rapid and unfortunately things not good for no one right now really but uh, as of two or three days ago CAA announced that they're going to be laying off they laid off 275 employees and they laid off also Excuse me, guys. They laid off, not laid off, but fired 90, like, talent agents and executives. No one saw that coming. But it is a dry period. I mean, hell, there's nothing happening in Hollywood, really. So how can you maintain? You can't just keep paying salaries or what have you. So nonetheless, I gave you that backdrop because 50 Cent posted something that was very interesting on his Instagram. He said, CAA to fire 275 people, I'm going to hire them and start my own agency. Hmm. I don't know if he was planning, but if this video happens to get around to him, which I hope it does somehow, I want to inspire him to go for that, and I'll tell you why. CAA and Will Morris and ICM and all this, they have a lot of strict contingencies as to getting in with meaning that you have to have a college degree. For the most part, you have to have some type of footing in the industry. And you have to come highly recommended and start from the mailroom and work your way up into a junior agency or on up to an agent. Okay. Very, very complicated process, it seems, right? But on the contrary, the whole industry is really built on hustle. Let's go back to Will Morris himself, the guy who started the Will Morris agency, the first agency that was out there. He was a booking agent, which he happened to walk in and really just start doing on the circuit, you know, in which they were doing things like live performances. Before This is before film. This is the guy who literally would get an act and try to sell them on stage and get a little piece of the action there. Well, after he got screwed over by one of the biggest, uh, biggest of the uh, agencies there, booking agents, he decided to start his own agency, Will Morris agency. And lo and behold, that was right around the time Hollywood just started. So he was able to formulate things and really, really just set up a whole platform, which is called a template of what we see now with the sound agencies. So when you look at all the other agencies out there, none of these motherfuckers really got any kind of credentials to say that they can, you know, really be an agent more than anybody else. You know what I mean? <laughs> so they just kind of clicked up and... And for the most part, since, you know, Will Morris was Jewish and, you know, a lot of the guys in the industry were Jewish, 
a lot of the mafia had their hands in it also. So they kind of protect these guys for a piece of the action also. So for a long time, you could just walk in the industry without some type of price to pay. I mean, even right now, let's say, for example, I mean, if you want to be an agent, there's, it's really about the politics of agency. It has nothing to do with your background, really. Now, to get a license, let's say in California, yeah, you have to have some background. Let's see, management or producing or something like that to even get your license and all sorts of things. But aside from that, all those credentials, guess who have them already? 50 Cent. Not only do 50 Cent have them, he have the money and the resources to really make a very, very successful agency. Now, someone else who's kind of doing something similar is Rock Nation, Jay-Z's company. The difference is, Rock Nation is a management company. Now, the difference between a management company and a talent agency, a talent agency is, uh, they basically kind of do the same thing, they represent talent. Uh, management can actually request more of the income throughout their deals, what have you, such as like 20 or 25%, or even 30% in some cases. The agencies, for the most part, is 10%, unless it's a deal outside of really just talent representing talent. And I'll get into that in a second. Um, the problem with, not problem, but the difference between the management company like Rock Nation and the CAA, management companies legally cannot negotiate track contracts. The talent agency can. And there's a couple other things that gives the talent agency a little bit more of an advantage, which actually helps them to negotiate for certain points on the back end of certain TV shows, whatever that they get on air, which allows for them to get money forever, almost like buying an a, a apartment complex or something like that and just getting money every month. For example, you guys ever notice that there's this show called Lucy on the air? Now, Lucy is the number one syndicated show in the world, has been for years and years. But Will Morris has been making money off that forever. You know what I mean? <laughs> I mean, they still get money off of that to this day. So even to this day, Lucy has been paying a lot of bills for the Will Morris agency. You see what I mean? So that's kind of how it goes for the most part. So getting back to 50 Cent and what I was saying earlier, um, I had mentioned also um, that um, I wanted to say something else that I thought was very important. I'm trying to think how to word this simply enough. Well, I told, let me see. I'm trying to think how, uh, let, me think, let me think about loud here. Um, uh, I'm going to have to come back to it, guys. I'm back to it in a second. I'm not going to leave that what I had in my mind. But let me mention something else first. Let's go back to the credential side. 50 Cent on his own had produced the number one show in TV. Period. I mean, his show really was beating a lot of number one shows that was on regular networks. Power was the number one show. Well written, well put together, well casted, everything. He owned that show. Now, one of the restrictions of a SAG after franchise talent agency, which is very important also is, you can't produce, you can't do nothing, you have to be a talent agency only. Now, if you notice, a company like Will Morris is really not part of SAG after. They're part of the union, the uh, talent agency union, right? And that's important because they still get the benefits of being part of SAG after without having to follow their rules. And that's why they own things like, let's say, for example, they have Steve Harvey sign. But they also own the Miss America pageant, which means they're producing that. So they own that so independently. Put their client on that so and they get paid, you know, to move forward and get success all around the board there. That's just one of the many examples that goes on with them. Now, I'll show you the difference between Will Morris and the other agencies. Will Morris, by owning those shows and taking on that outlet, they fucking make two billion dollars a year the other agency is about 200 million dollars in a year big money but compared to these guys over there will morris uh-uh not at all so you have ari emmanuel the guy who's really portrayed in entourage as you know ari gold that's who that character is based on he's the one running real William morris right now him and patrick whistle these are guys who came from other agencies or what have you now they're running the ship and they run the ship and they're just eating very good. But no other agency somehow had caught on to their formula. Nonetheless, I'll take it back to that. We'll get to that in a second. But what I wanted to say was this. Oh, um, CAA, I was talking about you don't have to represent talent only. CAA, as of today, no, yesterday, 
They sign um, sign Zania Khan. Zania Khan is a, uh, one of the girls. She's one of the co-founders of Black Lives Matter in Canada. Now, prior to that, they signed Patrice Cullors. If you guys are familiar with her, Patrice Cullors is one of the founders of Black Lives Matter in America. So they signed Black Lives Matter. How do they get money out of that? Maybe they strike different deals, advertising deals. I have no idea, really, offhand. And to be honest, I'm really kind of confused about the whole Black Lives Matter thing personally because as the name is a great name and a great slogan and I think it represents justice for black lives, but the organization, they seem to have more of an intention for the LGBT community. So and I'm not sure what their agenda is. They haven't really been clear as far as I'm concerned with that goes. But nonetheless, to each his own, as long as everyone gets a fair share, right? Um, but getting back to it, I say that because there's many other ways that you can make money and make deals as a talent agency. 50% of one of those people that really thinks outside the box, you know, and this is the guy, once he delves into something like this, I guarantee you he'll make a billion dollars in his first year. So 50, if you listen to this, hire those agents right away. Hire all 275 people, those people that fired, put together your shop and operate and get busy. It's a lot of room out here for a lot of people to make a lot of money, and that's one of those avenues, my friend. So, anyway, that's it for Music News TV today. Hope you guys check in with me more often there and subscribe, and I'll be having more interesting things to discuss with you guys. Bye for now.